Have you been paying close attention to what is going on in Israel and the Middle East? I sure hope so. Because as Christ followers with all that's going on in our world, there is no greater issue than Israel. Why? Because Israel is God's chosen, beloved nation, and we are called to love what God loves. And when we stand with Israel, we stand with God. There are a whole lot of people in the world who will tell you that Israel is a bully in that region and that it needs to be wiped off the face of the earth. It's been tried before. There are a lot of other folks, including many in the church in America, who will tell you that because the nation of Israel rejected Jesus as Messiah in the first century, well, all bets are off. They don't get the promises of God. The church now moves in as the spiritual Israel to receive the promises of God. But my friends, that's not supported in God's word. And that's where we find his truth. That's where we learn what he really believes about Israel. So let's go there. Let's go to Genesis in the beginning. When God Yahweh is speaking to Abraham, who would ultimately become the father of Israel, God says, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. This is called the Abrahamic covenant promises that God made to Abraham and ultimately the nation of Israel. First, that he would give them a specific land, the promised land where Israel resides today that he would make them a great and mighty nation and that ultimately they would bless all the families of the earth. Again, a lot of folks would tell you they should be ignored or even wiped off the face of the earth, but that's just not truth. God has made these promises to Abraham and Israel. And this Abrahamic covenant is called an unconditional covenant, meaning that it doesn't matter what Israel does or doesn't do. It's all about God. It doesn't say, well, unless you reject Jesus as Messiah a few thousand years down the road, then all bets are off. No, it doesn't say that. This is all about God and his character as a promise keeper. And if you believe that he is a promise keeper, then you have to believe that these promises to Israel, his nation, will be fulfilled. Stand with Israel. You stand with a promise keeping God. But we don't have to take it just from that scripture. Let's go to the end of the book and see what happens. Will Israel survive all the way into eternity? Revelation, John is carried up into heaven and gets a sneak peek at what will come when Jesus returns to earth and a new Jerusalem is set up. He says, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It had a great and high wall with 12 gates and at the gates, 12 angels. And on the gates, names were written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. The new Jerusalem where Jesus will reign. The gates at, that are the entrances into that city will be named for the 12 tribes of Israel. They're not going anywhere, my friends. God loves Israel. He also fights for Israel. In fact, the name Israel means God fights. And that's the name that God gave them. So when you stand with Israel and when you fight for Israel, you are fighting and standing with the creator God of the universe. And just another note in case that's not convincing enough for you, take a look at the map. See where Israel is? tiny little piece of land there in what is called the Fertile Crescent. Look at the giant, giant countries that have surrounded it for millennia. Most, if not all of these countries have tried to destroy, wipe out Israel. Egypt failed. Babylon failed. Assyria failed. Lebanon failed. Iran is going to fail. Why? 
because Israel is the beloved and chosen nation of the God and King of the universe who is a promise keeper and says one day his nation will be a blessing to the rest of the world. So friends, let's stand with Israel. Let's step up and proclaim this truth. Pray for Israel and let's pray like crazy for peace for Israel. Hey friends, I have one more thing to add about today's deep dive. As I was putting away the video equipment, I looked down on the ground and I saw this. This is a ring that I got in Israel several years ago and it has in Hebrew the first verse of Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I lost this months ago, thought I would never see it again and have been heartsick since about it. Somehow, it ended up outside under a mound of snow and then a mound of dirt. And today, after I shared with you the truth about God's love for Israel, he showed me my ring. God says in the Abrahamic covenant, I will bless those who bless Israel. <laughs> I am beyond blessed today. I hope you are too.